afternoon. My name is Olga Peña. I am a biomedical scientist and a volunteer for the Canadian Science Policy Conference. And today we have Brian Espinal to interview here. So Brian is a teacher, a speaker, a coder, and a maker. So Brian, I have a five-year-old and I'm very curious to know about how this whole code curriculum is happening in Canadian schools. So what, can you tell us a bit more about the current status of computer education or coding uh, in Canadian schools? Absolutely. Uh, I want to start with the five-year-old because I think that's where we need to start. Um, since computer science as a discipline has been around, it's sort of been high school and higher ed. Now our five-year-olds, our kindergarten students, our young learners, they know a world without rules. They're naturally curious. They don't understand gravity or inertia. And so coding uh, or computational thinking or, or playing in Minecraft, those are experiences where uh, rules don't necessarily apply as we know them to be. And so those kids will really gravitate to those experiences and want to be curious and inquire uh, and create content. Now, in terms of what's happening in coding and computer science, it's been a grassroots movement for a long time. The more I push it uh, and the more I study it, the more I learn it's been going on since at least the 1960s with Seymour Papert and Logo trying to get kids to learn math through kinesthetic experiences, to construct their own knowledge of the world around them through uh, tangible manipulatives and, and being able to touch and, and feel things. So for the better part of the last decade or so, this is kind of our, our coding push 2.0, if you will, in many ways, a lot of educators have been doing it in their math program. How do we create problem solvers? Mm -hmm. How do we create independent thinkers? And I think that's where the acronym STEM ha has come to be. And of course, STEAM now in terms of integrating the arts because there's such a yeah. significant overlap uh, between the arts and mathematics, science, technology, yeah. and, and engineering. In terms of a more formal uh, space, a lot of things are happening here in Ontario with the renewed math strategy, the mention of STEM education. British Columbia is pirating a coding curriculum that they're mandating, uh, I believe, next year or the year after for, for a K to nine. So we're seeing a lot happening at the elementary side for the first time. Uh, computer science has typically been an elective at the secondary level, and of course, totally an elective if it's something you wish to pursue uh, in post-secondary but we're now seeing it happening at the, the younger grades. A lot of that conversation starts with the pedagogy of coding. Uh, how do we create risk takers? How do we create students that want to learn from mistakes and, and embrace failure? Not necessarily celebrate failure, but the idea of uh, changing a variable and, and trying again. Yeah. We've been doing it in science class. We've been doing it in phys ed class forever. That's fantastic. Well, I'm that so was excited a ramble. to bring all of that and maybe to give some support at home to my kids. <laughs> um, so I understand that you're now working at Actua. So can you tell us a bit more about this organization? Yes, definitely. Actua is uh, Canada's largest STEM outreach program. It's been around for 20 plus years, engaging kids in the informal education space. We have 36 network members across Canada at different college and university campuses where kids get that coding experience. They get uh, the STEM experience robotics, makey-makey, learning in scratch, being immersed in, uh, in a learning environment that has kids of different age groups. Uh, kids can embrace that notion of failure because it is in that sort of after-school camp space. That is fantastic. So since you're here today with us, can you share your thoughts of the value of CSBC? From, your, from what you have experienced? This is my first time yeah. and I think this is an incredible experience. Uh, we have corporate people, we have charity people, we have not-for-profit people, government people, education, all stakeholders that are required to create a prosperous economy, community, and country. I completely agree with that. So, um, since if someone wants to basically contact you, like, you know, like, wants to work with you or wants to, you know, do a nice project with you like where where should they I'm go happy to, find to Skype you? yeah you can <laughs> find me on Twitter at, at Mr. Aspinall uh, you can find my blog at brianaspinall.com or you can find my CV at mraspinall.com <laughs> fantastic well thank you and so much and YouTube and Instagram and Snapchat yeah. and all those other things just put your name all the things Google, kids are on and Google <laughs> and it'll come up yeah got it okay well fantastic thank you so much for being here with us today and hope you keep enjoying the, com the conference thank you so much for having me yeah.